What is NFT? Are you confused about what exactly NFT is? And are you missing the opportunities in NFT? Or are NFT buyers paying massive amounts for nothing? The NFT industry is perhaps one such puzzling investment opportunity that some people get it and some people just don't. Such an investment opportunity could turn out to be a multi-bagger with the correct approach, but it also attracts more than the usual amount of scams. You can no longer say that investing in popular stocks like Amazon or Apple are asymmetric bets. But imagine investing in Amazon when only a few people believed in internet businesses. That could have been your moonshot investment. And as easy as that sounds in hindsight, the popularity and ignorance around internet businesses at that time also created a bubble of dot-com companies not having real income or intrinsic value. So it would have been difficult to identify Amazon or Google out of all of the scam companies. NFT seems to be exactly at that stage right now. And if you want to pick an Amazon of the NFT industry, you have come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to explain what exactly NFT is, why people pay for NFTs, and how you can buy and sell them. Make sure you stick around to the end as I'm going to share some important points that you should consider before buying an NFT and avoid scams. Sounds good? Let's begin. What is NFT? A non-fungible token or an NFT is essentially a unit of data which establishes proof of ownership over a digital asset. What makes it different from other coins and tokens is that it is unique and non-interchangeable, that is non-fungible. Unlike Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is exactly the same as another Bitcoin, but NFTs are always different. Just like cryptocurrencies, NFTs are also stored on a blockchain. Therefore, the proof of ownership of a particular digital asset is publicly available and verifiable. NFTs were first launched on the Ethereum blockchain, but other blockchains, including Flow and Bitcoin Cash, now also support them. You can think of NFTs as ownership rights to art, for example. If you own an original Mona Lisa, what makes it valuable is its certificate of authenticity. Everyone could download the Mona Lisa from the internet, print it, frame it, and place it on the wall. But no one would pay you if you try to sell it. But you could sell your Mona Lisa for millions if you had a certificate saying that it is an authentic original Mona Lisa. Similarly, NFT is like a certificate of ownership that gives value to a digital asset. Although NFT is often associated with art, literally any kind of digital file can be stored as an NFT to identify it as the original copy. It can be a photo, art, video, or a music file. Even tweets and memes have been made into NFTs. NFTs most likely come with a license to the digital asset it points to, but this doesn't automatically confer copyright ownership. The copyright owner may reproduce work and the NFT owner gains no royalties. For example, if you own the first ever copy of the Harry Potter book, J.K. Rowling is still a copyright owner. You're not entitled to royalties from the sale of other Harry Potter books. So what exactly makes NFTs valuable? Well, like any piece of art or collector's item, the NFTs do not have any intrinsic value, but only a perceptive value. If a group of people is willing to pay for it, then it carries value. There are broadly two reasons why people are willing to pay for an NFT. The first reason is rarity. Just like any physical asset, people pay to own a digital asset just for its rarity. This could be something one and only, like owning a famous painting, or something limited and unique, like Nike special edition shoes, or something previously owned by a celebrity, like Barack Obama's jacket. In the NFT world, the first ever tweet was sold by Jack Dorsey for over $2.9 million because it was the only first tweet ever. The US Basketball League NBA has introduced trading card NFTs embossed with iconic basketball moments which are sold via NBA Top Shot, which could be considered as limited and unique collectibles. The rarity of an NFT could also be its ownership history, for example, if M&M bought an NFT and resold it, people would want to buy it just because M&M held it once. The second reason, and probably the reason why I would pay for an NFT, is its utility. 
If, for example, Elon Musk sold only five NFTs, and by owning one of them, you could have a lunch meeting with him every year for a lifetime, these NFTs would quickly become popular. I would certainly consider buying such an NFT if I get to pick his brain for business ideas every year. There are several ideas on how NFTs can be utilized to give real-world benefits by individual influencers and celebrities, by communities, and by organizations. Flyfish Club is one such members-only private dining club where membership is purchased as an NFT. The token holder gains access to its restaurants and various culinary, cultural, and social experiences. Now that you understand what NFTs are and why people find them valuable, let's find out how you can buy and sell them. But before we move on, if you find this video valuable so far, please give it a thumbs up. It makes us feel appreciated for all the hard work we put into making videos. All right then, if you watch this video so far, you're probably looking for opportunities to make money in this industry. NFTs could either be bought as a collectible for fun, or they could be bought with the expectation of reselling for a higher price. But how do you buy an NFT? Well, the process of buying NFTs is quite simple. NFTs are either sold by the digital creators, that is, minted for the first time by the creator of the NFT, or listed for sale by the existing NFT owners. NFTs are bought and sold through marketplaces. For an analogy, you can think of online marketplaces like Amazon and eBay that connect sellers of physical goods with buyers. Similarly, for NFT, there are marketplaces that connect digital creators and NFT owners with the NFT buyers. Some of the popular NFT marketplaces are OpenSea, Axie Marketplace, and SuperRare. To buy an NFT, you need a compatible wallet that is funded with cryptocurrencies like Ethereum. Using cryptocurrencies, you can buy or bid on the NFT. An NFT is a token, just like cryptocurrency. Once you buy it, it is stored in your wallet. The important thing to keep in mind is that, unlike cryptocurrencies, NFTs are not very liquid. You can list the NFTs for selling on the marketplace, but there isn't necessarily a buyer who is willing to purchase them. One of the important concepts to understand in the NFT buying process is NFT drops by the creators. Put simply, an NFT drop refers to the exact time and date when the NFT minting will happen. If you can get in on an NFT drop the moment it happens, you are more likely to get your NFT cheaper before the value, hopefully, soars. But how do you decide which NFT to invest in? Investing in NFTs is a relatively new phenomenon, with celebrities like Eminem, Paris Hilton, Shawn Mendes, and more jumping in to create their own NFTs. But if you make an NFT investment out of FOMO, or just for the sake of bragging, chances are you'll make a mistake. So here are three rules that I suggest you consider before making an NFT investment. One, do your research. If you were to buy a new smartphone, you'd probably go with Apple. And if you were to buy furniture, you'd probably go with Ikea. But unlike most physical goods that you buy, NFT is comparatively new and requires more research into the creators behind the NFT. Know as much as you can about the NFT creators. Who made the NFT? Do they align with your beliefs? What other art have they made? Do you like art? What do other people say about them? Are they part of a community and what's their reputation? Researching the NFT creators will help you avoid a scam and collect authentic NFTs. If you can't find good information on the creator, you may want to avoid that NFT. Second, set a budget. Like any risky private investments, you should only spend what you can afford to lose. Set a budget for NFT investments, considering your risk profile. Even if your research is promising, don't exceed the budget that you've set for buying the NFT. Unlike cryptocurrency, NFTs do not have exchanges with ready buyers and sellers. Instead, it has a marketplace like eBay where you can list your NFTs and hope that someone buys it for a higher price or even buys it at all. The flip side of the tip above is to avoid buying NFT just because you can afford it. If the price of an NFT appears too good to be true, it probably is. Keep in mind that NFTs only have a perceptive value of what people are willing to pay for it. So, be wary of just buying NFT because it's cheap in comparison to others. Third, beware of the scams. If you do your research 
and get a good understanding of how the NFT market works, you'll easily spot scams. They'll often contact you via DMs or email. They make big promises. They often want you to make a quick decision. This should sound the alarm bell. Don't rush into anything in the NFT world. Do your research and invest on your terms and timescale. While some of the emails and DMs can be just marketing tactics for authentic NFTs, it's best to search for the NFT project yourself. Research its creator, set a budget, and follow your investment strategy for each NFT investment, however profitable it appears. You might probably miss out on opportunities, but you also stay safe from the scams. Okay, then that is it for this video. Let me know how bullish you are on NFTs. Would you collect NFTs just for the fun of it or to make money? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show your appreciation for our efforts and consider subscribing so you don't miss our next bite-sized explainer video on crypto. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.